time to start. Good morning, morning. all of you. So today we're going to talk about dancer, but not quite dancer. We're just going to get to the starting line. So yesterday there was a talk on dancer in DBay IX class, and there was one slide with four bullet points saying this is how you set it up which of course is all he needed to do because he had a real topic after that. Today we're going to cover for 20 minutes that one slide. But it's going to be good stuff. So what is Dancer? It's one of those frameworks. And if you haven't figured that out yet, there's a talk later in the day that has all the frameworks in line. We'll take care of that. Under Dancer is the PSGI and plaque, and that's how your code talks all the way back to the server. And it takes care of that ugly stuff that CGI used to do for us. It is based on ra Rack from Ruby. And when I said at the last conference, it's based on Ruby's Rack, one of my wife's friends who watched the video said, who's Ruby Sinatra? <laughs> So this is the version of that slide from yesterday that actually comes out of dancer.org. If you go and look, and this is what it says you need to do to get started. Curl to go collect it. Dancer minus A to build your scaffolding code for the Hello World site. Change directory down into it and run it. That's it. It's now running on port 3000, ready to go. But that assumes a whole lot of stuff. I didn't have modern Perl the first time around, so I had to get that. What if you uh, don't want to put it on port 3000? I have lots of websites, and all the examples in this talk are based on a server that's serving 14 different domains across five different versions of themselves. So there's usually jeff.dev, and then there would be others, developers, and then there's a dev, and a test, and a prod. So we have to take care of all that. And of course, you can't tell your clients, you need to use a port number to come buy my stuff. So you have to have the two parts together. And I couldn't figure out how to tell Nginx to turn around and call the port in back. So it is entirely likely that many of you in this room know five of the six topics we're going to cover better than I do. But if you don't know one, you're in trouble. Yes? Yeah. Right. Uh, the, the Dancer website has a longer version than the Quick Start. Uh, an entire manual now, they tell me. Hopefully. So what we're going to do today is we are going to install all the parts we need. We're going to assume that you went to Linode or one of the other big providers. You got a brand new. Linux box straight up, nothing done to it yet. So we're going to have to do everything. GCC and all its friends, Perl, Nginx, Starman, Dancer. We're going to configure Nginx to be out front. We're going to configure Starman to be in the back. And we're going to bring up a website, the basic Hello World website as it was given to us. And from here, you can go to any of the other tutorials and figure out what to do. And at a few points along the way, I'll say, if you want Mojalicious instead, this is what's different. So some assumptions. We've got the Ubuntu box. You've already set up DNS, so when we start talking about domain names, they're pointing to the right place. That takes a little while to propagate, so do it before you start everything else. We're going to use this domain. And any of the code samples will be colored in four different colors. Anything in red, you have to do is root. Anything is purplish, it's me, which is the developer on this box, because I didn't want to call it Jeff. Mr. Prod is going to take care of our production versions and take care of Perl. Think of that as a not quite root. Yes, he's in the group almost root. And that's the one you share among your trusted developers. And, the, oh, and then Mr. Perl is going to take care of the Perl part. And those two are the ones you share. So we have a brand new Linux. We need to get up to date. So the first thing we're going to do is apt-get, because I am on an Ubuntu version. If you're on one of the other flavors, it's yum and some of the others. But 
the commands are pretty close. So update and upgrade in that order to figure out what you're missing and what you need. And that'll bring you back up to where the current state of the world is. Now we're going to install Build Essential. The reason I'm doing this is I want GCC. It turns out that if you install some things like DBI, they're not pure Perl, which means they need C. And if the C compiler that you have doesn't match the C compiler your distributions have been using, things get very cranky. So we're taking all that out. We're going to install what we want up front. It's going to install all these extra things at the bottom. Actually, it's going to install the top half. It's going to suggest the bottom half. I didn't bother to do it. Do it if you need to. We're going to install Nginx. This one's much simpler. It doesn't need as many tools. This will take care of the front end. It's like Apache. We're going to add some groups. Many of us have been using Unix forever, but we can't quite remember how to do these things, so all the commands are in here. We're going to create some users. At the time I wrote this, I was using T-Shell still, so I wrote the commands that way. Later, when we see any aliases and things, I wrote them both ways, from the C-Shell world and from the Bash world, for those of you who don't want to translate back and forth. Plaque needs some places to log, so we're going to create that. Var, log, plaque up, and then some subdomain directories where everybody else can be writing their parts. Remember, directories, uh, logs from the Nginx part are run by the Nginx user, but from all the Dancer stuff, they'll be written by whoever happens to be running it. So we're, that's why there's the different directories. Yes? You can change them to anywhere you want. There are many ways to set everything up and get it working. This is not the best way. It's not the only way. It is, however, one way that is known to work. If you follow these instructions, you will get to a state where you can bring up the website and do something. If you decide that this is not the right way for you, change whatever you need. Um, one thing that you'll notice here is that I chmod 777 my log file directories. This is a part that goes back and forth every time I give the talk. First I say, do it this way, and someone goes, that's not safe. So I say, okay, instead of doing that, you could change the ownership to the person who's actually writing there. And someone else goes, well, if you have many machines and you have different user configurations and different machines, that's going to get ugly. So let's just go with this. Set it to 777 for starters. After you've gotten a couple files in there, if you feel like it, lock it down to the ownership because you know who owns it. And really, it's between you, your sysadmin, and your maker. Nginx needs some logs, too. They go strangely in almost the same place, one directory a little bit different. Process IDs. I did not realize that this is how process IDs worked until I started this whole process. Oh, that was sad. And there is a directory, var run, where lots of processes write their process IDs. The file is named after the thing that's running, and the thing that's inside it is the number of the process ID, so later we can kill it. There are other ways to do it, but this is one that works. Unfortunately, I made one small mistake. Var run gets blown away every time you restart, so this directory goes away. It might be better, instead of writing your process IDs into a directory here, is just to write it straight in. So instead of plaque up slash something, it's plaque up underscore something. Then you don't have this problem. Every time I restart, I have to remember to go back and make this directory. But I haven't changed the slides yet. So a couple of aliases, and they're done in both ways. We're going to be installing Pearl Brew in a second. And we're going to install it someplace not quite standard, so that's why we have to put that in there. Now it's time to do Perl Brew, which is going to take care of all our Perls. We're not going to be using the system Perl, but we're not going to be throwing it away. Remember, there's lots of things on your machine that needs that system Perl, and if you mess with it, bad things might happen. So we're going to put one set of Perls, one place, off an ops Perl, which is where we are going to be looking for our Perls, and all the developers can use it. So we'll make that place. We'll change the ownership to make Mr. Pearl. Original slides of this had it as root, but of course, that's not entirely safe. 
So Mr. Pearl, you can share with the people you truly trust. Mr. Pearl's going to set the alias to get there too. And then using the Pearl that was already on the system, Mr. Pearl's going to say Pearl Brew Init, and it's going to go off. Yes, go off and take care of that and put stuff in there. Wait. Right, it's going to set it all up, and then you want to go in there and use that original Pearl Brew and say available. This is the list as it was when last I built it. It changes over time slightly, you can, but you can have any or all of these all at once. I went with 518. Notice this line right about here. It says it could take a while. They're not kidding. It took about 24 minutes. I gave this talk once, and the comments that came back in the survey said, you should do a live demo. <laughs> it's a 20-minute talk. So I don't want to have to change my code later when next year we decide to upgrade. So I created a sim link. So current is in Perl Brew, And instead of saying user lib Perl like you usually do at the top of your scripts, say this. You always use yours. You never use the system Perl. It's always up to date to the latest one. You can do what you got to do. We're going to install some Perl modules. We're doing this now in our brand new Perl we just installed. So make sure you're using the right bin to go grab CPAN M or CPAN Plus or whichever of the choices you choose. They're all about the same. We're going to get DBI, DBID, SQLite, YAML. YAML is optional, but it is how some of the configuration is done in Yancer, Dancer, so go ahead and get it. Plaque, Task Plaque, Starman. At this point, there's a break. If you wanted to do Mojalicious, go with it. Otherwise, we want Dancer and the Template Toolkit. You don't really need DBI, probably, because you're going to go DBIX class We're in the modern world now. But remember, this is one that absolutely positively has a C component. It's not pure Perl. And we'll prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that we got our GCC right earlier. Aliases, we're going to set up a few places. We need to set where our Perl is. We're going to put it at the front of the path. <coughs> Perl Brew, the way it normally works, is you as a mere mortal install your Perls in your home directory. We didn't do that. We put it someplace completely different. So we need to find it. We'll create a sandbox. In my home directory, I just have a directory called Websites. And now we are up to the second of four bullet points from the beginning on the one slide. Dancer minus A, and then the name of the module that is the base of your development. It will make all these files. When you run it, the list is slightly longer. It also lists the directories, but we all know what directories are. From the command line now, you can just say plaque up. You can give it a port, and it will, and then down to app.pl, and it will run it. And if everything worked right, open in a new window. There it is. That is the Hello World website they give you, and it doesn't do a whole lot. It just tells you a few variables. But we don't want it to show up there. We want it someplace else. You don't need quite as complicated as this, but remember where I developed it, it was 14 domains by five different versions. So my solution was each domain has a, num has a number, port 21, and each different kind of sets of them has a bigger. So my version is in the 18,000s, and the production version is at the 20,000s, and we tack the two numbers together. Keeps everything out of trouble and from stepping on each other. Need to tell Nginx that you want it to be doing some work for you. So we're going to listen on port 80. You're going to tell it where to look for the logs. You're going to tell it where to take care of its errors. You're going to tell it that inside your directory, you're going to have some static parts, the images, JavaScripts, anything else that doesn't change, doesn't need Dancer. Nginx will take care of it directly for you. The rest of it comes down in here, where it turns around and calls localhost, because when you call Dancer in your routes, Nginx says, I don't know what to do, but my good buddy Dancer does. I'll call him. He does it all under the scenes. Nobody out front realizes you're actually hanging out on that port. The way Nginx and Apache works is inside, it said, 
Etsy, Nginx, there's two directories, enabled and available. You do all your work in available, which are the ones where you set everything up like we just did on the last screen. And then the ones you actually want to be working right now, you symlink across to enabled. That way, if you want to turn one off, you don't have to blow it away and hope you can find it again. You just break the link. To start the back end, earlier you saw we said plaque up, we gave a port, and we gave the script name. That runs right there in your console. The logs show up right there in your console, which is fine if you're developing, and actually you should do that when it's just you on your bo box. But when you're doing the production version, you want it to just be there. So we're going to star man, we're going to demonize, pick a port, pick the logs, pick the PID's location. How many workers defaults to five? And for big production machines, of course, you'd go bigger than that. For yours, I originally set it to one because I said, I don't need to suck up resources. And somebody raised their hand and said, you should always set for at least two because when you have more than one, sometimes it goes here, sometimes it goes there. But if there's no there, you're never testing it. So you need at least two so it can occasionally fail if that's going to happen. To stop the backend server, you can kill and give it where your process ID is to get it out. Turns out there's more clever ways than that, but this is what I went with first. And it just looks cool. And we can set an alias for it. And that leaves me with one minute for the bonus topic. This is the configuration file as it comes to you. Notice that at the bottom, start tag and end tag are square braces. That's because template toolkit is from an one world, and Dancer was based on something that came from Ruby in the other world. One side liked squares, one side liked angles. If you want to switch to the other side, it's set for angles now, but you could put it back to being squares if you had stuff coming from the other older world and you wanted to switch. So look at this screen here. And look at what I did to change it because I was going to put the UTF-ness in. Does anybody who hasn't seen the talk before see what I did wrong? I'll go back. What? I did leave some white space at the start of the line. <laughs> Control minus. That hunk of error message, if you make that error, when you start up your dancer site, that will show up in your log. And then that will show up in your log. And then that will show up in your log until one of two things happens. A, you notice and you deal with it. Or B, you completely fill the hard drive. I've done it twice. <laughs> the only way I figured it out the first time was because I couldn't open the file to read it I thought, well, maybe my editor or something is wrong over here. I will zip it up, take it to another machine where I know I can read it, and I couldn't make the tar ball because, of course, there was no memory on the machine. And tar and gzip would tell me there was a problem. So don't make that mistake again. But you've been warned. So this is what it should have looked like. Remember in YAML, white space matters. So take it all the way out to the line. And that's it. If you wanted, if that's what it looks like. Strangely, it's just the same. So how do we, oops, go back. Need a back button. And the, li the links to the slides are on the conference website. And the video from Orlando's there, if you follow the link to the slides. So we have. Time for a question or so before they kick us out. Um, just sort of a dumb admin question, really. Um, so Nginx is a web server. Yes. Correct. And Starman is also a web server. Not it, I looked it up, and it says it's a pre-forking plaque web server. And I'm wondering, why do you need two web servers just to get it going? Starman is... Yes, Starman, Fast CGI, and several others are all in that space. 
They're the ones that are down real close to your code. Nginx is the one that you set out front because it's serving more than just the dancer. Nginx is also saying, if you're asking for an image, we don't need to go through all the trouble of having Starman take care of it. We know the image is right there. Just go get it. Okay, so what's the difference to Apache? What's the difference to Apache then? No, there isn't. Nginx is a competitor directly to Apache. Yeah, but you don't need, you don't, you don't need um, um, Starman then with Apache, yeah? Or, uh, you you or don't what? have to have it, but most people do use it. Oh. And so, uh, I, I, I think probably that's, uh, that's probably all the time it. we have now, but uh, feel free to speak to Jeff uh, uh, during the break. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff.